metaphysics between theory and experiment. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the more powerful way of discovering truly novel ideas about reality? Well, you need both, top down and bottom up. Um, yeah, it's, just a, it's, it's a really interaction between all these things. So over time, the observations and the theory and the modeling should go, both get, get closer to reality. But initially, and it is, I mean, uh, this is um, this is always the case. You know, they're, they're always far apart to begin with. Um, but you need one to figure out where, where to push the other. You know, so um, if your model is predicting anomalies um, that are not predicted by experiment, that tells experimenters where to look. You know, um, to 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 find more data to refine the models. Um, you know, so it, it it goes it goes back and forth. Um, Within mathematics itself, there's, there's also a theory and experimental component. It's just that until very recently, theory has dominated almost completely. Like 99% of mathematics is theoretical mathematics. And there's a very tiny amount of experimental mathematics. Um, I mean, people do do it. You know, like if they want to study prime numbers or whatever, they can just generate large data sets. And with a com so once we had a computers, um, we began to do it a little bit. Um, although even before, well, like Gauss, for example, he discovered, he conjectured the most basic theorem in, in number theory, which is called the prime number theorem, which predicts how many primes that are up to a million, up to a trillion. It's not an obvious question. And basically what he did was that he computed, uh, I mean, mostly used, uh, um, by himself, but also hired human computers, um, people who, whose professional job it was to do arithmetic, um, to compute the first 100,000 primes or something and made tables and made a prediction. Um, and that was an early example of experimental mathematics. Um, but until very recently, it was not. Um, yeah, I mean, theoretical mathematics was just much more successful. I mean, because doing complicated mathematical computations is uh, was just not not feasible uh, until very recently. Uh, and even nowadays, you know, even though we have powerful computers, only some mathematical things can be um, explored numerically. There's something called the combinatorial explosion. If you want us to study, for example, Zermatt's theorem, you want to study all possible subsets of the numbers one to a thousand. There's only one thousand numbers. How bad could it be? It turns out the number of different subsets of one, of one to a thousand is two to the power one thousand, which is way bigger than, than than any computer can currently can can enumerate. In fact, any computer ever or ever can um, enumerate. Um, so you have to. You have to be, um, there are certain math problems that very quickly become just in, intractable to attack by direct brute force computation. Uh, chess is another um, a famous example. Uh, the, the number of chess positions uh, we can't get a computer to fully explore. But now we have AI. Um, um, we have tools to explore this space, not with 100% guarantees of su success, but with experiment. You know, so like um, we can empirically solve chess now. Uh, for example, uh, we have we have a, a very very good AIs that, that can you know, they don't explore every 